Big Buck Registry, Big Buck Podcast, episode number nine. Big Buck Registry is a virtual museum of hunting stories. We preserve a piece of Americana by interviewing and recording hunters about their hunts and experiences from across the country. And who knows, maybe we'll learn a thing or two along the way that'll help us take our hunt to the next level. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is your host, Jay Scott of the Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. And we are excited to be here today, and we're hoping that you are excited to join us as well. Uh, we are so excited that you, you tuned in to listen, and we have a great lineup. Uh, this is going to be episode number nine, as I had mentioned before, and this is the inaugural episode with Dusty Phillips as co-host from Chubby Tines Outdoors. And uh, you're going to get to listen in. We're actually talking to Josh and Elton from About Tine Outdoors. And we're going to talk about all kinds of things. We're going to talk about, uh, let's see iPhone apps to help your hunting improve, uh, wind direction, uh, sanctuary, deer sanctuary, hunt, knowing where not to hunt. We're going to talk about getting youths involved in the outdoors. We're going to talk about uh, different techniques that those guys use when they're out in the outdoors and basically what their overall mission is. So I'm not going to chew up too much time explaining that because you're going to be able to listen to all of it. Uh, but stay tuned at the end for all of our contact information if you'd like to reach out to those guys as well. So uh, I'm going to just jump right into the show and take it away, Josh and Elton. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jay Scott, your host of the Big Buck Registry, and I am here with my co-host, Dusty Phillips of Chubby Tines Outdoors, and we have a very special guest with us today. We're talking to the folks from About Tine Outdoors, and we have Elton and Josh with us. Elton, Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, Jay. Hey, Dusty. It's, uh, this is Josh here. Um, certainly a pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for having us, and we're looking forward to talking about some some great hunting stories and answer any questions you have for us and uh, anything we can do to help out other sportsmen and women and, and uh, kind of share our secrets and go from there. So thank you very much for your time. Very cool. Right. We're psyched to have you. Yeah, welcome aboard, guys. Thank you. What I'd like to do is just um, kind of set the, the, the framework here and just tell us a little bit about who you guys are and where you're from. Uh, we are from southwest Ohio. Um Kind of what has become the mecca for deer hunting, as as you both probably know, um, lately, and yeah. we're, we're blessed to to be kind of right in the middle of that. And um, we actually began out, officially about time outdoors. We, we 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 started just this last year. We kind of have had many ideas for for many years, and we decided, you know, it's about time to put this stuff down on film and on you know use the web and obviously technology as it is today which is kind of where we came with the name about time as in it's about time to, to show people what we're about. Um, Elton and I met about 15 years ago. We both worked at a juvenile correction facility um, and we worked with youth and we did a lot of outdoor stuff with, with the kids hunting fish, or not hunting, but fishing um, outdoor activities. And we decided that uh, we really loved it. And uh, while at work one night, we flipped through the back of a filled in the stream magazine and uh, I found a, a place called Real Foot Tennessee that had a an all inclusive fishing package. <laughs> so we decided to uh, set out on the adventure and, and drove what we thought would be a few hours down the road, which ended up being about ten, to uh, Real Foot Tennessee in the middle of the hottest season I think it there possibly could have been. Yes. And uh, anybody who knows anything about crappie fishing knows that probably wasn't the best time to go. <laughs> um, the lake was down about four or five feet when we got there. Um, we obviously didn't have very much luck fishing. We knew absolutely nothing <clears throat> at the time what we were doing. So we figured we better uh, get to know get to know what we were doing before we set out on any uh, more excursions <laughs> such as that. So. Right, right. <laughs> It ended up being a beer drinking fest, which still uh, <laughs> makes a great story. But other than that, 
Um, and, and throughout the years, you know, since then we've, we've, um, we've, you know, shared many stories with each other and, and I'll let Elton kind of take it from here. And yeah, through, through most of our adventures, like, you know, we, like Josh was saying, you know, we, we've documented a lot just in memories, but we, uh, wanting to get back to the basic of what we started at the rehab center with, uh, the kids is being able to do these outdoor activities. And, you know, we were blessed with, uh, with somebody, uh, a relation that I work with to get us this piece of property that, uh, I think, you know, with, with our grooming and educating ourselves further is, uh, has become a great piece of property for some great hunting and fishing. <clears throat> we do have, uh, camp outs out there. You know, we just, we wanted to be able to make sure that we could preserve a place, however big, so that we both have kids. So we want our kids to be able to enjoy that and still, you know, not, not so much focus on video games and stuff, but get them back outside and, you know, just be able to enjoy the stuff that, that he and I have just grown to love and, and really just be able to share it with other people who have like interests. So it, it just, you know, it just all came about one evening sitting, sitting on the back porch. We said, you know, let's get these cameras out. Let's get filming. Let's, uh, you know, our stories are funny to us and they're exciting to us. And there's got to be some people out there that, that share the same interest. So, we just decided to go ahead and do it, and that's basically how we started. Nice. So you're kind of um, you're you're working on getting kids outdoors. Is that more or less what uh, some of your mission is? Well, I mean, you know, God's certainly not making any more land, and um, hunt, you know, hunting land is, is becoming harder and harder to come by. Um, public hunting, obviously, is it has its own. You know, you never know what kind of guys are out there and whether they're drinking or, you know, it's typically not a safe place to take your children. Um, so we certainly want to pass that on to our kids and, and, and other kids as well. Um, so that, that certainly is part of our mission. Um, we also donate food, um, or, excuse me, our, you know, our, our harvest, we donate to, uh, feed the hungry. Um, simple things like that. Um, we're members of, Farmers and hunt, hunt, excuse me, farmers and hunters feeding the hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we try to do some good things out of it and, and just make, you know, make us not just another hunting, hunting group or hunting club or guys who just like to go out and, you know, Trophy shoot hunt. things. Yeah. Um, so we try to make some good out of it. We, we, we've kind of learned what we're, what we're doing here. We've, we've studied, you know, whether it be through TV shows, you know, we've watched TV shows and we've realized that one, you know, our deer are just as good, if not better, than some of these guys that are that are make, doing this for a living. Um, we may be almost as good as looking as some of these guys that are on TV getting paid. I don't know, but um, <laughs> so you know, we love what we do. We, we you know, there's an almost in there. There's an almost in there. We heard. <laughs> there's an almost. Yeah, an almost. almost. Well, you know, depends on who you ask. I guess. That's right. That's right. Wow. So, I'll be old gotcha so uh you guys spend a lot of time outdoors and how did you come up with the the name about time well again uh jay we were sitting on the back porch and we were just kind of just throwing ideas at each other we had uh big sonny who you can see on our website he's one of our team members out there with us and it was just you know just sitting around bsing and talking about our stories and all that and uh you know i'd i'd done a little bit of filming on my own just kind of landscape stuff basically being out in the tree stand we never really took it serious and you know josh just looked at me and said well it's about time we did it and i thought well that's that's true it is about time and then it just instantly it looks like it hit its boat you know about time about time yeah. you know and it's good we wanted to make sure we kept it about you know the outdoors and not just about time hunting we want to be able to do hunting fishing we you know we're interested in you know just about everything so. right so it's not just hunting you're doing, you're doing some fishing, you're doing anything outdoors that has to do with uh, being in the elements, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very nice. Yeah, we have uh, we catfish. I mean, it's just, we have, we're, we're just so blessed out here with all the, the local ponds and our neighbors. You know, we can, you know, any type of freshwater fish, basically, we can get within two miles from here. So it's just, yeah, it's just about, you know, just staying outdoors, you nice. know, and doing everything. So. Now, are you capturing the moments by uh, writing about them, or are you uh, videotaping them? Are you, are you, how are you, what are you doing to capture those moments? Yeah, well, you know, we're obviously through pictures. We have, uh, you know, as you may have seen on our Facebook and website, mainly our Facebook, 
um, trying to post a lot of pictures, getting the memories out there. I have, you know, I took my, my now six year old and, and three year old daughters out last year, set in a blind with them, um, videoed that, which was just, you know, a, a priceless, priceless video. Um, of course there wasn't a deer within a hundred miles of us probably, but, um, <laughs> You know, things like that. So yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get some notes down on paper, mainly video, mainly pictures, um, and, and obviously in our head, what we want, where we want to take this thing. Um, so we're, we're trying to get there for sure. So very nice. Now you're, um, I wanted to go through a couple of the pictures and then, uh, I want Dusty to ask some questions too. Um, there's this, uh, just looking on your Facebook page there on your timeline, there's a, a picture of a gentleman wearing, uh, some about time outdoor gear and he's standing next to a sign that says big sunny's parking only <laughs> who is this guy <laughs> that, that that gentleman's name is cleveland cameron and he hails from south texas big oil rig guy all of his life on an oil rig moved to ohio uh to be closer to his wife's family and he started at the rehab center maybe two or three years after Josh and I did. And we, and, you know, we just clicked. He was, he was the big catfish king of Southern Texas. And, you know, he would, again, like I said, on our Facebook page with him came all the, the amazing stories of, you know, all being, true, all true, all true stories. Yeah. True. But, uh, that's, we call him big Sonny. His, his dad called him Sonny all of his life. They never used Cleveland. We didn't even know his first name, you know, for the longest time. So, <laughs> but, uh, he and I just, we went up to the, uh, the deer and turkey expo up in Columbus, yep. uh, this past March. And on our way to a place called Vance Outdoors to pick up some gear, we just happened to pass Big Sonny's pawn shop. So I, you know, so I, my joke was, I said, I want to get a picture of you in front of this store. And we, he's big <laughs> enough that he would have actually covered the, the, uh, the pawn shop part of the sign. And when we get out, of course, you know, the store's closed and you can tell it's kind of dilapidated. So we didn't want to really get up too close to it. But as we're walking back to the truck, I noticed that they had uh, their own personalized parking sign. So, of course, we had to stop there and get his picture next to it. So That's pretty funny. Um, uh, yeah. Sonny, um, he looks like um, my wife's grandfather. And... <laughs> it's uh it's uncanny how much he looks like and and really my my wife's grandfather is um he's a step grandfather technically and he when he he was uh he's a vietnam vet and he came back from vietnam and basically when he got back he swore that he would never leave town again like that was it i'm done yeah and that's pretty much what he does and he doesn't he's hunted before but he's not a big hunter but he loves to fish he's one of the the most outdoorsy fishermen i've ever met um and he he'll he has a boat and he's a great trout fisherman that's what he does he's pretty much just solely trout fishing wow. and he also makes his own custom fly rods but he's one of the most generous guys i've ever met he he's not out to make a buck he just likes to make fly rods and he right. just he just uh gave me one for christmas he just showed me this fly rod that he made that wasn't his top one that he made but he says hey i i I'd want to show you another one that i made and here you go i'm like well, that's unbelievable so what the way we connected was when he when he got back from um from vietnam as he as i said he didn't want to go anywhere else but there was one place that he really wanted to go and he was didn't really want to ask me because i think he knew i'd say yes and he all his he you know those thick books that you get at cabela's if you're like this lifetime member you get the hardbound oh, catalogs yeah. i get one myself there yeah. you go well george got this every single year and it was his dream to go to cabela's in pennsylvania before they launched <laughs> across the united states in yeah. in the fashion they did so i said so i went and i bought a cover for the back of my truck and we just to make sure I had a place to lock down all the stuff he was going to buy. And we, <laughs> we drove from New Hampshire to Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And George was like a kid in a candy store for about three days. We actually, we, we stayed overnight down there. Nice. Uh, it was crazy. But, uh, to that, to this day, it is one of the, his most happy moments in the world. And it was all around hunting and fishing. So that was, and he reminds me of George. 
Well, yeah. after hearing your story about George, they're very, very similar. <laughs> very similar. Yeah. I mean, Sonny's the same way, but with catfish. That's awesome. So, yeah, generous man. Give you the shirt off his back. He's just one of the nicest guys we've ever met, and just you know, I don't, I don't, I think maybe you might want to edit the uh, the part about resembling a grandfather. <laughs> He's a little sensitive about <laughs> me, but uh, well, he looks like a younger version of George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go, younger version. Yeah, he That's he's right. uh he's got twenty years youth on uh, George, I would say. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the, he's he he has that same um, smile, I guess, is what it comes down oh, to. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it's genuine. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of uh, kind of a joke within us that we we call Sonny our elderly, the elder elderly gentleman of the uh, of the of the group. So he he's a little sensitive to his age. But, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Let, let, let me break it down for you guys. You guys, uh, we're just kind of on the back porch and was hanging out as a normal group of buddies would, and and come up with the about time outdoors, and and that's where it took off from. And uh, tell us a little bit how you guys prep for your season to come and the uh let's talk about some deer hunting and what what do you guys do as a uh as a team to get your season started uh that's a great question dustin and it's actually we're uh we're a lot more methodical than we were five years ago we actually went to the uh the extension office we have we each have printed up maps that we laminated of our property so we can you know, we get our dry erase markers out and we, you know, we, we try not to keep our stands in the same place every time. So every year when we are doing our scouting, we, uh, we obviously take note of trails, uh, heavy bedding areas and different stuff on the property. Um, and we, we basically cordon off the 200 acres that we hunt. We, we basically give each person a quarter of it and they kind of play with it a little bit, figure out where, you know, what might look good and, you know, mark a few possibilities and uh we set our trail cams up and it's just a, a great piece of equipment are these trail cams um just with everything and you know the ones that we use the moultries that have the uh the time the day the moon phase i mean you, you really get a good idea of when and how these deer are moving through and and what conditions are heavy and it, it's just it's just priceless information and yeah. uh jay you asked earlier if we document stuff and that's that's the main thing we do in our documentation for the hunting is, is, you know, keep track. We, we try to name the deer just like every other hunting team, but, you know, we try to get to know them, try to get, you know, figure out where they're coming from. And, uh, we all agree upon, you know, set rules on our property that, you know, we just don't, we don't bend on. So there's certain areas of this property that we created, um, through trial and error as bedding areas and staging areas that we don't set foot in. I mean, we don't even shed hunt these areas. Hmm. So, you know, we try to coordinate it off. And like I said, we, you know, we pick our dominant wins and, uh, we were big believers in that, the scout look app. So, uh, all of our stands are marked. So anybody, you know, any of us hunters on our team step out there, we can pull up the scout look. We know which, where the wind is and which tree stands, but mainly, I mean, you got to get out there and, and you got to do a lot of scouting from a distance. I mean, you got to be willing to sit and, you know, on one corner of the driveway. Uh, and just sit in glass. I mean, I think a, a lot of mistakes we made early was we tried to get out in the woods to look for deer. And, you know, these deer were looking at us from the corner of the driveway. So, right. You know, so, like, like you, yeah, go, it's just go ahead. A, lot, a lot of trial and error. I mean, it's, you know, you have to be patient. And I think that's what we've learned over the last at least three years is to really be strict about not going out there unless we absolutely have to. So, it's a lot of our pre planning is done on our dry erase maps so great great that's excellent and uh we're going to backtrack a little bit because uh if uh, you guys on that i know jay does i'm all about naming my deer uh that, that's a <laughs> fact jack but uh give us, give us some examples of some of the names that you would have there on your hunting property we'd like to hear the names of what you've named your deer on your property Dusty has some great names for deer, by the way. He, he, <laughs> just well, ours, awesome. I mean, some of ours are basically, obviously, the, the easy way to do it when you're looking at, you know, when you pull the trail cam car and you've got 500 pictures and, you you know, you're flipping through. And just like every hunter, you you automatically focus on the giant in the picture. So they, they normally get the more, the classier names like Josh's deer this year we called Krabby. 
uh, massive 165 plus deer, but he just had these two little crab claws on the end. And, uh, you know, he's impressive in brow tines, but it's just, you know, he got crabby. Mine was Brutus. You know, he just, he was just an old deer that he was beat to heck and, you know, he was just a fighter. Um, so, you know, so you're saying he had, he had a little bit of attitude. Oh, he did. He was, him. you know, in the, the big deer we've actually taken off this property, I think seven total. All of them are 150 or above. They're, they're just fighters. This, like I said, this property is just a betting mecca and none of them like each other. So every, <laughs> every deer we've taken, is, they've been cut up and their ears are torn to shreds. They're just, I mean, they're all just, just brutal deer. So, but, oh, wow. uh, but yeah, we have, you know, we have our silly names too. We, we had one called the Midnight Rider. He showed up every night at midnight. Um, you know, we, we, of course we have our basic, we'll have a split G2 or, you know, we'll have the two tall tine or, you know, your common names that I think a lot of hunters pretty much just come up with because of the char- characteristics of the deer and everything. But, you know, we've, like I said, we've had a couple ones that are, that are special and whatnot, but, you know, it's just basic names. Can you think of any that we've had that we haven't seen since besides the Midnight Rider? Yeah, there was GQ. I don't, we, yeah, GQ. GQ. Every every picture we had of that deer, he had his head tilted like he was at glamour shots. <laughs> so we called him GQ. <laughs> uh, just you know, just it's just it's fun to sit and name them. But uh, more than likely, just like any other hunter, once you focused on that one deer that you've named, it's really hard to pay attention to the. We have the heavy eight, you know, or we have half rack and all that stuff. You know, you see these deer and you're almost. You get to know them, and it's just like <laughs> you're not hunting them. So when you see them, it's no big deal. When they see you, they, you know, they're pretty relaxed. <laughs> right. Just yeah. think, I always wonder what they call me when I'm I'm out there messing around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's yeah. Yeah, you know, I name them. They got to have a name for me. <laughs> I'm in my stand of sleep half the time. So. No, that's no good. <laughs> I've always had good luck sleeping in my stand because when I wake up, there's like I'm surrounded by deer. It's always yeah. always works oh, out yeah. pretty good. Exactly. <laughs> or the embarrassing moment when you wake up and draw back on your decoy. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Am I the only one that's done that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go with that's, yeah. Let's hear that. We got we got to go right into that. You brought up another. We we got a story coming for you all right there. Let's hear about waking up. And seeing a decoy in front of you, and what do you do? Well, was that, you know, you get was it, that you, Elton? That was me. That was me. All right, let, let's hear uh, the story on waking up to a decoy. Now, this is you got to keep in mind. This is at the beginning of my my hunting career. <laughs> Eight years ago, I had a uh, I had one of the backyard bucks as a target. So I noticed my brother in law. He went and bought the giant, you know, monster buck decoy and all this. So I thought, well, I I should be able to use this backyard buck. So I actually, my property where I live, I na- my neighbor has about 14 acres, and there's some deer moving through. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll just slip out there one morning, take my decoy out, and <laughs> this is see if good. I can rattle one in. You know, and it's not even rust. I don't know anything about hunting. All I, you know, I've been with him a few times. So I go out there, and I set that decoy up, and I know to face it towards me. So I climb up in the stand. Of course, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm out there two hours before sunrise. and <laughs> 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 want to make sure my scent was down. And of course, fall asleep. So about an hour later, I wake up to, you know, sleepy eyed and see this deer just as the sun's coming up, sitting right there staring at me. So I, you know, of course, being new to it, I jump up, grab my bow and get about halfway back before my mind wakes up and realize that I'm thrown back on the backyard butt. So. <laughs> nice. Uh, I did, however, at the end of that hunt, since I didn't see any deer, I went ahead and took a shot at him just to make sure that uh, I was sighted in and everything. So I was good to go. So. <laughs> Hit him right in the kill zone, huh? That's right. Yeah, might as well. I mean, you know. Laid the creeper on him. (laughs) Which kind of brings up an important point. You know, something we we do is, you know, we set these stands early, and something I think is is very necessary is to actually get in your stand and shoot from your stand, you know. Get to know it, get comfortable in it, because as you guys know, shooting from the ground at a square target or at a decoy is is much different than shooting 16 feet up in the air on a semi windy day or you know when you got six layers of clothes on or you know all that good stuff you you know you train how you fight kind of thing so it's very important to practice 
we all have tree stands in our backyard and a tree that we, we, we practice from. So, you know, it's very important. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's something I do a lot too is, you know, it's just in a good way to just kind of kill some time. I'll take the bow out and sit in your stand, throw off some shots and just kind of stay tuned throughout the year. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Dusty, what other questions do you have? You guys, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, scent control. What you guys do, uh, before you head out to the woods, if, uh, if there's any particular products that you could share with the listeners. Uh, on what what steps you take to keep your scent down uh, before you head out to the woods? Uh, yeah, sure. We use a lot of the uh, <clears throat> the Evolve um, products. I do. Uh, we we tried different things. We had uh, at one of the shows. Well, I think it was two years ago. We went up to the the Columbus show and we got the uh, Herd Guard. I believe it's called. Uh, it's the Jimmy Steiger. I believe it's one of his products but okay. you know we 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 mainly we want to make sure we don't do a lot of uh we don't wear our clothes in our car to the property you know we we all stop at the very end of the driveway and that's where we get suited up our clothes stay in airtight containers um of course we use regular scent wash again the evolve but uh it's you know it, it, we're pretty strict about it too like i said when we when we have these rules that we do um you know for the the part, the guys in our team that chew tobacco, there's no chewing in stands, you know, because we're all using these stands. Um, you know, we try to keep food to a minimum. If it is, if we do have to take snack food out there, it's obviously not going to be, you know, beef jerky wafting off into the woods or anything. We take, you know, simple things. Uh, of course, none of us smoke. So that's, that's a plus, but it's just, you know, we, we just try to make sure that, uh, we keep our clothes in these scent tight containers. You know, and after, you know, setting tree stands when you're sweating and we're in our scent gear, you know, we make sure that we wash it and just try to, you know, we just try to be mindful about, you know, where we're walking on the property. Like I said, we have our areas that we don't get near. Uh, you have to be smart about the wind, but, you know, scent control to us is, is mainly just making sure that we're not, you know, stopping at the diner for breakfast. You know, we're not pumping gas you know, the morning of and, and doing that type of thing and bringing those odd scents onto the property. Our right. property doesn't have anything around it. So any real outside scents would, would very much spook these deer. So we just try to maintain that, you know, we, we don't take any scent out there. So it's not so much as, you know, we, we do use some type of cover scent. Sometimes we'll use fox urine. Uh, sometimes, you know, we use the doe estrus during the rut, of course to kind of help cover our entries and exits. But uh, really, it's just, you just have to be religious on keeping your clothes clean and, and not stopping at these places or wearing them in your truck. I mean, it's amazing how, how quickly you can really spook a deer that has no idea what that smell is. You know, some right. of them, they say, get used to the farm equipment, smell of diesel and that kind of stuff. And that's great if, if somebody can pull that off. But like I said, our deer... The nearest farmland is probably a quarter of a mile. So the deer that, you know, are, are feeding in the fields on the opposite end that's, you know, downwind, they might not know, you know, what some basic smells are, you know, smell of food or, you know, anything like that. So we just we just make sure that we keep our clothes in our containers. And, you know, when we're done with the hunt, we will spray down again and put our clothes back in the, uh, the airtight containers before we head out. So yep. just basic mindful things that I think most hunters probably do. Right. When you when you say spray down, is that uh, some particular kind of scent or what are you using there when you're saying spraying down? Uh, spray down. I use the Evolve. That's the, the Evolve E3 stuff. Uh, they make the laundry detergent, the clothing spray. Um, I'm trying to think. Hunter Specialty also makes really good products. Uh, they use the uh, the scent discs where you can get a doe estrus or fresh earth disc. Um, I, I personally like to keep a lot of the fresh earth discs in my airtight container. So when I put my clothes in, you kind of get that earthy smell. Um, a fellow we used to hunt with, he actually kept dirt and leaves, you know, pine needles and all that stuff in his container. Just, to, you know, whatever he gathered coming out of the field, he would drop in that box and then his clothes, you know, would take on that, that aroma as well. So, right. but uh, spray down, uh, we spray down. Once we get dressed, of course, we spray down with the Evolve scent control. Uh, whether it's fresh earth or just no scent and, you know, head out, do our hunt. When we come back in, we spray down again, you know, just to kind of get that perspiration smell off of you or whatever you may have picked up. And then, uh, 
then you can put the clothes back in the airtight container. So it's just kind of a double protection, you know. Excellent. Excellent. Jay, I'm going to turn you over to him and let you ask a few questions. Okay, cool. Um, I had a question. You had mentioned a, an app that you're using. Um, I don't know if it's an iPhone app or something like that. I think you're, I'm looking at a picture on your Facebook page, and I'm guessing that's it. Could you tell us a little bit more about that application you're using? Yeah, that's the uh, the Scout Look app. I believe it's Mossy Oak, and, and we have found that it is absolutely a, a hunter's must. It is, it is absolutely spot on hour by hour on wind direction, wind speed. You can plug each stand that you have, whatever property you're hunting, um, plug that stand into that exact spot and you can pull up, you know, if you have six stands on one property before you go out, um, you know, the night before, two days before, I think it's up to 72 hours. Um, it, it gives you a five day and a 10 day forecast as well, but. So, you know, we'll pull up that, you know, whichever stand we think we want to sit in, we'll check the wind. If the wind isn't right in a stand, we, we simply don't go to that stand. Um, but it, it is literally hour by hour, um, and it is spot on um, as far as wind direction, wind speed. Like I said, it's it's a great app, and I'll let Elton add a little more to that if you'd like. Absolutely. Yeah, like Josh said, it is. We've, we've been in the stands when uh, the wind direction has changed. And that the Mossy Oak Scout look at it, it's just it really is it's it's pretty cool. Um, you'll watch the needles die down on the wind. Um, it gives you what I think is really helpful is it's called a scent cone. So mm -hmm. when you're in your tree stand, you can click on the tree stand you're in and hit scent cone. And it not only does it give you the speed and direction of the wind, it actually creates a cone of where your scent should drift on the property. So even if you think you're, well, I've got the wind on my left side of my face and the deer should be coming out on the right, I should be in a good spot, you, you can almost see where that scent cone could actually, where your scent could actually drift and cut the deer off before they even get to the spot. It, it, it truly is a very helpful, and we use it in the preseason as well We as we're going through the property because we mow a lot of the fields. It grows, the, the buffalo grass gets high and it's just the thicket. So we, we try to keep a lot of the fields mowed uh, for fresh grass for the deer. But uh, during that time, you know, we'll pull out the Scout Look app and say, that looks like a great spot for a tree. We'll see what it looks like after everything fills in. And you can just, you know, you just tap the, the home page and add a stand. And it, I mean, it basically, it, it gives you the exact GPS coordinate of where, you know, we found that tree. And then you can just type in possible lean on stand, you know, or we, anywhere you find a great rub or just a bunch of bedding area or any type of sign, a bunch of scat or maybe you found fresh berries. You can just add all that stuff to it. And as you're doing your scouting, you can just click on that. If you're sitting in that stand during scouting hours, uh, you can click on it and you can add on, hey, I saw the big heavy eight come through at this time. So you can you can track your deer through this app too. So it's it really is a very helpful app for, like Josh said, for hunters that, that don't have the barometer hanging outside and know when the moon phases. I mean, you know, it gives that too, by the way. It does. It does all the lunar. It does. <laughs> really? <laughs> My point is, you don't have to, you don't have to be an astrologist or, you know, you, it, it does all the thinking for you. So if you know that the deer are going to move, you know, before or after your full moon, or if you know, you know, when that harvest moon's coming in, then, you know, you, it does all the thinking for you. So you're going to know, you can look at it, glance at it. Like he said, you can even pull down up to 72 hours in advance to know which way the wind's supposed to be blowing. So if I, you know, I, I, my days off are through the week. So if I know I'm going to hunt Thursday, Monday, I can pull up the app, scroll to Thursday and say, okay, more than likely I need to plan on hunting this stand. So wow. it, it, it is, it's very helpful. It really is. And we use it just about every time we step out onto that property. So, and this is uh this is an iPhone app that you're talking about. I believe they have it for Android as well. Isn't they, they it? They do. Yes, yeah. They have it as Android as well. Yeah. Android <laughs> has it. Uh, yeah. The iPhone, we, we, I just downloaded the free. You can do the free. It doesn't give you quite as many options. Uh, the first year I used the free. The second year I went ahead and purchased the app, uh, which I think it might have been a couple of dollars. Yeah, two ninety nine. I think. Yeah, it might be up to five ninety nine now. Who knows? Uh, but right. it really is. It's worth every penny. And it is because it works on your computer as well. You log in to Scout Look on the computer, you get a much bigger picture. It's easier to to enter your information on a regular keyboard. And it saves it to your your app on your phone. So any adjustments you make, it's back and forth. So oh wow, very helpful. That's pretty neat. So you are, and what is it called again? Mossy Oak what? 
Scout Look app. Mossy Oak Scout Look app. Yes. I'll have to check that out. That's That looks and, like a handy tool right there. And, and, you know, and like I said earlier, what we do with our uh, dry erase maps, we can do it too. We can share the logon and the password. So all of us actually have the same app. So when we pull it up and make an adjustment, it's on Josh's. That's cool. Uh, yeah. That's it's, very it's cool. Handy, it's a very handy tool. Very nice. Um, one of the other questions I had was uh, you had mentioned Moultrie, uh, Moultrie trail cams. Yes. How many are you using and how big is the plot of land that you're generally hunting? Oh, uh, that's a good question, Josh. We have 193 acres, um, probably in 30 to 40 of which we have, you know, we have a sanctuary that we do not, you know, again, we do not step in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we have different, different water sources. Um, we have ponds, we have creeks. So, you know, again, this is all part of our strategy on, you know, hunting throughout the throughout the season through the rut when they're going to be going the water when they're not when they're going to be bedding you know which again is you know how we stand placement um so Elton? we we right now i think we have uh eight cameras that we set up okay uh, we have you know we six of them are the moultries and then uh two of them are the bushnell but uh i like the bushnells we bought them when bushnell first came out with the smaller cameras because we ran into a problem our first year there uh, we weren't the only ones, obviously, hunting. So we <laughs> we had purchased uh, three Moultries that had the flash before IR, you know, the infrared became huge. And obviously, they uh, they found our cameras very easily, and they took them. So uh-huh. uh, so we got the IRs. We started getting smart, hanging our cameras a little higher, brushing them in a little better. And uh, with those little bushnells, I mean, they're tiny. You can get them into tight little spots to where they're in a you know a V of a tree and but, uh, yeah, we, we, right now we have eight cameras that we use and, you know, some of the cameras we check once a week, some of them, you know, we've been lucky enough to find a heavy movement of deer. You have to check them every two days or the camera card will fill up. So it's just, uh, they've been, you know, they've been very helpful. We've even set them on our, uh, our entry points of the property and we've, uh, what, three poachers, we've caught three poachers and actually, uh, somebody pulling scrap off the property from where a barn had caved in we got their license plate and their car make and model is that so, I mean, right they're, oh they're very helpful yeah. i mean they're just they're super sensitive now and now they have the blackout ones which uh i think the price on those are coming down to where they don't even have they don't emit the red flash like the irs so i mean they're just great i i really haven't the deer didn't mind the flash i mean it, it you know you could tell when they looked at the camera when it flashed but the ir to me, it seems like they look at the red light longer than they did the flash. But, uh, you know, it, it, they're just a great piece of equipment. Like I said, they'll give you the moon phases, the temperature, the time. And, you know, you can set them on one to three shots, you know, just click, click, click. Or you can set it on 60-second video, which we've used. And uh, they're just they're a great tool, and we really rely on them a lot. Gotcha. Uh, the videos that are on your, your Facebook page, are those from the, the uh, Moultrie's? The, uh, the videos, which one? There are uh, on your uh, about tying outdoor videos. There's a one. They're all there's like one thirty seven, one thirty seven, and a fifty eight. Oh second. yeah, uh, those yeah those those will be from. Well, they're probably mixed. There's probably some bushnell in there as well. Okay, most of it. Yes. Gotcha. Um, I wanted. To, I picked up on something you just mentioned. I'm, I'm hearing this over and over as I interview hunters from across the country. It's about sanctuary. And it seems to be a common element in some of the uh, some of the great hunters that are seem to understand uh, where not to go. It's not so much where to go; it's where not to go, which is kind of an interesting concept if you're thinking about setting up your hunt. Um, tell us more about your sanctu- sanctuary and how you decided that that was important to your overall plan of hunting. Well. A, a, a stress-free deer and a happy deer equals big deer. And, you know, it, it, it's very important to make sure that these deer are, you know, are, are not stressed out because when they're stressed out, obviously they, they you know, they don't, they, they, move on. They, they move on or they, you know, that they, they're not as big simply. So I know it's very important to, to create a, a place for them to relax and, 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 and not go in there. A lot of hunters, you know, they sit in a stand for an hour, they get bored, they get down, they, they start stalking. 
and to, to no avail and they have no luck. So again, you know, we have to create a place, at least we learn that we have to create a place that these deer can be comfortable. We're not going to mess with them. Um, we're in and out of our stands. We're not walking around the property trying to find deer. We're going to let them come to us. And that's very important. And I'll let Elton add to that if he has anything. Yeah, we, we basically on our maps, um, when we got the property, we, we went on and picked stand placement before we set trail cameras and got to walking around the property. We knew we had to mow some, so we rented mowers and we started mowing these fields and our properties cut into several different fields, uh, from when it used to be a horse farm before it, you know, went empty. But, uh, we found a spot, you know, that was just, it's just gnarly. It's, thicket there's a there's a lot of cedars um, a lot of thorns and it sits basically near the middle of the property where it has fresh two freshwater ponds on one side it's got a cornfield like I said a, a quarter mile three quarters of a mile away and it they basically have to travel outside of this hub to get to either food water uh, you know hot does or whatever so we decided, um, and I don't know what the terminology for uh, when you fall a tree halfway, where you just cut it halfway and let it fall over. Yeah. It creates cover and, you know, uh, concealment for the deer. But we went through and we did that with a bunch of the uh, the older pines that were, uh, you know, losing their luster, so to speak. Yeah. And we just, we basically went in and, and just made them a, a great bedding area. We gave them avenues to get to the food, to the, the ponds, like I said and to the open fields to where uh, they could find some grazing does. And and we did, like Josh said, we, we don't go in there. We just, you know, once we were done with it, we basically just, we made our, our, our travel routes to our tree stands away from it and downwind of it. So, it, you know, it might take a little longer to get to your stand, but it has paid off for us tenfold in, in doing this. And we've been able to keep those deer on the property instead of moving through our property. So That's a great tip. Dusty, what do you think about that? Oh, I definitely think that's a great tip. Uh, you know, the, the pressure that you put on your, on your big bucks is very important. Uh, they, they don't do stress very well. They don't take on activity very well. Um, uh, and, and like Elton said there, they will, I think Josh or Elton once said it, they, they will leave your property right now. If they get stress or they, they get pressure, they're gone. They're, they're, they're just not there anymore, and it, it, it's kind of weird how it happens, but a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of hunters don't figure that out. Uh, you, you can't be waiting around their bedding area, or they're not going to they're not gonna bed there. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what happened to our, uh, the deer we spoke about earlier, Midnight Rider. You know, we, we hunted that stand every day, and he, you know, when he finally came through during the rut, took a shot at him and educated him where we were. The shot was just low, went under his belly. We never saw him again. So it's just, you know, these, these big deer, these monster deer that people are killing, they don't get big being dumb. So <laughs> right. uh, it's pretty, it's, it's one of our most valuable things we do with our property, I believe. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to agree with you on staying out of the bedding area. Uh, you know, that, that's a great tip and, and I hope everybody takes that uh, to heart because it's, it's definitely very important that they have low stress, low pressure. Uh, for them to stay in the area. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, Dusty, what, what other questions do you have? Uh, how important is it to you guys, to uh, Elton and Josh, uh, if you just tune in, we're, we're talking with Elton and Josh here at About Time Outdoors. How important, guys, is it for getting a youth, female or male, into the outdoors and into the hunting? Well, I'd say I have two daughters, uh, three and six, and obviously they're my life, and they absolutely love the outdoors. In fact, three days ago, my six-year-old, as we're driving, just happened to be driving past our hunting property, um, says, Dad, we, when when turkey season comes in, will you take me turkey hunting? <laughs> and she's six. Um, when she won't eat a hot dog, I'll tell her that it's deer meat, and she'll eat it. I mean, she... <laughs> so <that's, laughs> <laughs> I love that. She loves, loves, you know, everything's deer jerky. She loves deer jerky. Um, so it's, 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 you know, it's extremely important to me, you know, not, I turned out okay, but my, you know, I never, I didn't have a father who, who did those sort of things with me. I was 16 when I 
you know, took myself out to the woods when I saw my first deer. I'll never forget it. I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. Sitting on a log and a, you know, an eight point buck is 20 yards from me and I'm shaking, like a, you know, like, like a freak and, you know, but I, I'll always remember it. It's just very important to me to, to instill that into my children and, and, and see how happy they are. You know, we sat in a blind, as I said, this last season and, uh, and they loved it. Of course, I probably shouldn't have taken Doritos for them to snack on because uh, they weren't exactly quiet. But, um, you know, it's very important to me. And I know Elton has a young son as well. So try to instill that in our children and to other kids as well is very important um, so that they have a place to hunt when, when they're our age and they enjoy it as much as we do. And, and you know. Absolutely. And, and Josh and I spoke last at the end of this past season. Uh, like he said, he took his daughters out. I was able to take my son out, uh, once and, you know, he was, he was more interested in turkey calling during deer season than actually looking for deer. But, um, it, it, it is important to us to do that because like he said, we, we didn't do it as kids until we were a little bit older. Um, I, you know, I don't remember being inside as a kid, but we never went hunting and that type of thing. So we lived in the city, but, uh, seeing just, you know, our kids enjoy it so much. We talked about last season, you know, a lot of these people, and we've done it too, we have these challenges or contests on Facebook, and we're trying to set up something to where we can offer uh, a hunt for father-son, father-daughter, mother-son, mother-daughter, some type of, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, grandpa, grandson, something to get, you know, two people that don't have the blessing that we have with this property, um, or maybe just, you know, if it's something they just on their bucket list they want to do you know we, we've kind of kicked the idea around and you know we've got it jotted down and it's just something we want to work out some kinks and make sure that you know everything is is good to go as far as you know obviously insurance wise but you know we want to be able to offer that to people and you know and i think our big dream is to, to one day be able to have a place to where you know we can invite you know like i like i said father son hunts we have father's day hunts mother's day hunts you know you know, get these kids back out there and let them, you know, get that family unit back together and, and enjoy that type of thing, whether it be hunting, fishing, you know, anything they want to do. So, but yeah, it's very important to us. And I think that, I think that's what really fuels us in our efforts and in filming and doing that stuff. I mean, you know, me, Josh, Sonny, and even Josh Laughlin, we, you know, we, we've become such a tight knit that, you know, all of our families, you know, we get together and we do this kind of stuff and it's just, we see how healthy it is for all of us. And, Absolutely. We want to be able to share it with other people if we can. That's right. excellent. Right. Very nice. Well, Dusty, do you have any other questions before we let no, these I guys think, get back to whatever they were doing? I think that uh, <laughs> they did a great, great interview, and we appreciate you guys coming on the show. Uh, we, I had a blast. I know Josh did. Absolutely. We, we Absolutely. really thank you guys for the opportunity to be on the show. Excellent. I, I appreciate it, Elton and Josh. That was great, and uh, I love – Love your uh, logo. Love everything about what you're doing. About Tyne Outdoors, knocked, locked, and ready to rock. That's the way to do it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I got a quick question here, kind of off the air. Hey, okay. uh, Josh, are you a painter by chance? Am I a painter? Yeah, or is that I am the other not. Uh, the other Josh, Josh Laughlin, he actually is a painter. He has his own uh, painting company. Okay. okay. I I told Elton last night that I knew one of the Josh's on your page. <laughs> okay. And uh, the painter, Josh. Is real good friends. Uh, he's a friend of a real good friend of mine, Cliff Owens. I don't know. You guys may know Kurt Owens from Tennessee. Uh, Josh, I think Josh went to Valley View Schools. I think. Don't hold me to that. Uh, Carlisle, Carlisle, yeah. Carlisle. Okay, so I knew it was one of the two. But uh, anyway, that I was telling Elton I knew a Josh on your page, and and I just had him pull up a picture here, and I see the mid Miami painting on the back window. Uh, yeah. It looks like yeah, he's pulled. Yeah. I oh, like told the fuck, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is a small world and it's crazy. But uh, definitely tell him that you uh talked to Dusty Phillips and uh mention Cliff Owens, he'll know exactly who I am. Absolutely, yeah, I'll mention certainly. Cool. Good deal. Uh, Josh Elton, if people if our listeners want to try to get a hold of you, um how should they reach out? Uh well, we have the uh the Facebook at uh www Facebook uh, dot com forward slash about time outdoors uh, we have our website at uh, about time outdoors dot com and on that website they can contact us we have a contact page which is uh, i believe it's about time outdoors at gmail 
com is our email. So gotcha. feel free. Absolutely. Send pictures, you know, stories. We try to post uh, some local hunters on our website. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it. Just, you know, it's a lot of fun to meet people that are in the area or even out of the area. So Absolutely. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely post all these uh, links and contact information on our website when we post the show uh, so everybody can reach out that way if they're listening. And uh, tell Big Sonny we said hi. <laughs> we'll do. We'll let him know. All right, very good. Um, well, we'll let you go, guys. Uh, thank you very much again, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yes, thank you both so much. Thank you we very much. You're welcome. Me soon. Right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. All right, everybody, that was Josh and Elton from About Tyne Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you listening to our show. If you would like to check us out, we are on iTunes, and you can go to the iTunes store and just pick us up on the podcast app on your iPhone or iPad. And uh, we're at Big Buck Registries, Big Buck Podcast. You can just do a search for us there. Uh, You can also find us on Stitcher. You can find us on Blueberry, which is on the Roku units on TV. You can also find us uh, on Microsoft Xbox and pretty much uh, a bunch of other directories out there as well. Uh, if you would like to send us a message or contact us in any way, you can send me an email. It's j at bigbuckregistry.com. Our Facebook page is Big Buck Registry, and our Twitter handle is also Big Buck Registry. Uh, if you have any pictures of any bucks that you'd like to submit, Uh, Just check us out on Facebook or go to our website, bigbuckregistry.com forward slash submit. Uh, So that's a wrap, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time right here on Big Buck Registry's Big Buck Podcast. (laughs) 